Hey guys, so today I want to talk about what was probably the first major culture shock I had when I went to Japan and it's about the phrase shouganai or shikata ganai and this translates in English to it can't be helped and it's used in the context of something like let's say it's raining outside and you forgot your umbrella you say shouganai oh well it can't be helped whatever I forgot my umbrella so I'll just have to deal with it and the first time I went to Japan, I heard this all of the time. I stayed in an international dorm with other international students and we had Japanese resident assistants or RAs. And their jobs were very strict. They had really strict rules. Like they couldn't go hang out with their friends. They couldn't spend the night anywhere else except for the dorm. They had to be at the dorm almost all of the hours of the day that they weren't in class or like doing absolutely necessary shopping. They had to help the students with their homework and help them buy things and any other problems that came up. So they were extremely busy. And I knew one RA who spent so much time helping the students that they got almost no sleep at all and their grades plummeted because they didn't have time to do their own homework or to study for their own classes. And I would get so frustrated for them. I would be like, tell the students sometimes no you can't help them you need to focus on your own work sometimes you have to take care of yourself too and they would just be like shogunai i picked this job that's just the way it is and those are the rules and there were other cases where like some international students would accidentally break the ra's stuff and the ra's would be like shogunai and i'd be like no go find the person who did that and get them to pay for it they have to pay for it if they broke it you can't just like let them get away with it. It drove me crazy that they would say shogunai for all of these things that I felt like they needed to fight for. And I think that's because in our culture in America, we're raised with an extremely strong sense of justice, like good versus evil and like people are right or wrong and the wrong people they have to pay. No matter what, they have to pay. And I, I may have a stronger sense of justice than most people, so maybe I'm even a little farther than a lot of American people. But this is, this is what we grew up with. If something happens to you and you tell your friends, your friends are gonna tell you like, don't stand for that, go talk to the manager, go write a letter or something. And that's probably why we have such a strong suing culture in America because people feel like they need to be vindicated when something happens to them. And it drove me crazy in Japan because it seemed like people just let things go and they didn't stand up for themselves. If you had asked me when I studied abroad in Japan what I disliked about Japan the most, I definitely would have said shogunai. I absolutely hated that phrase. And it wasn't until I moved back home to America because June and I had started dating and gotten engaged and we knew that I had signed a contract with my job before I ever even met June and it could be four years until we could be together. And actually, as of a couple days ago, it has been four years and we're still not together. There were a couple opportunities with my job where I could potentially move to Japan and I put all of my effort into making sure I was absolutely the best candidate for the Japan jobs. And I worked for this for years. I planned for years and did absolutely everything I could to get to Japan so June and I could be together sooner. And every single time that benchmark came where I could have gone to Japan, I failed. And it wasn't just failing to get to Japan to be with June, but like all sorts of other things would happen at the same time. Like you guys know my stuff got shipped to Korea and I haven't seen like half of the stuff I own in a year and a half or something. It's been a really long time. And I had the heart problem that woo suddenly a rare heart condition pops up and there would be problems with like my taxes and problems with appointments and problems with my cars. And it would just all come at the same time. And it was too much to handle. It, it's devastating. No one can handle that much stuff at once without like kind of breaking down a little bit and going crazy. And it was around that time when I started to rethink what shogunai actually means. And I started to think maybe shogunai doesn't mean you're weak or you won't stand up for yourself, but maybe it's actually a healthy mindset to have when bad things happen to you. If you can just accept the things that happen to you without getting stressed out or freaking out about them and you can say, all right, whatever. So, <laughs> so I had an appointment and you rescheduled it for this morning without telling me and I missed it. And 
now I'm in trouble. Okay, well, Shogunai, whatever. That's not my fault. So I <laughs> just have to reschedule my appointment, I guess. And I actually came to rely on that sort of attitude a lot when all of this stuff would happen to me. And I think... I wouldn't say it's one of the main things that has helped me get through, but I would say it has played its fair role. So I really have come to have a different understanding of Shogunai, I think. I think it can actually be a good thing for people. I'm curious about you guys and your experiences in Japan. Have you ever heard Japanese people use Shogunai or Shikataganai in like absolutely awful situations where you're like, no, don't do that. Just stand up for yourself, do something about it. Or are you more of the type of person who leans towards Shogunai and you understand that? And that's kind of your attitude about things. I'm curious where all of you stand because I've changed completely about it in the past four years. So thanks for watching guys and I'll see you next time.